So when you're up there, you have you got wolves in that area, you have bears in that area, you got moose, you got all this wildlife, and then you have this piece of ground where all these animals from thousands of years ago died. That is a special place you have. It is. It really is. And it's been fairly unknown about. Till now. Yeah. Have you had a problem with people going up there and uh, looking around? Well, one of the things that we do, my company has a, we're in the solid waste business. We have a construction debris landfill close by. So we have really good access control. Mm. At one point in my life when I had all this land, I was going, okay, I got to somehow make a living with all this property if I'm not going to mine it. And I had a piece that was all mined out. We got it permitted to be a construction debris landfill. I was looking around and go, how does, who owns the, who owns the solid waste business in this country? Well, the mafia. Okay. I want to get in on what they're doing because that's where the money's at. Solid waste? Solid waste. Landfills? Yep. Wouldn't that be dirty? Isn't that like if you're dumping waste on your land, doesn't that leak into the ground and get into the water supply? Not if it, and... it, it would, but we only take construction debris. Oh, okay. We, you know, we have the airport sitting in our landfill, the Fairbanks Old International Airport, 700 houses from Ileson Air Force Base. You just chop them up, throw them in there? No, we don't. We just smash the, them. We don't do the demolition. We just have the place where the guys that do the demolition can take them. Mm. So that's kind of how our company, even though we're a gold mining company, we're actually land managers. So, But when you're digging a hole like that, are you concerned that maybe they could dig a hole and there would be woolly mammoths in there too? Well, they're right next to where we're digging. So, Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you think that it, unfortunately that they could smash and destroy valuable bones? No, no, they're, they're just delivering the refuse. Right, but I mean to it's, dig that hole, right? No, the, the hole's already been dug. Okay. All that part has already been mined out. And you're sure there's nothing in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's stuff adjacent to it, but we don't impose on that. So what is it about this one particular five-acre area? Like, why are there so many animals in this one spot? And do you think there's multiple other spots? You said you know of one. But you have 10,000 acres. Yep. I mean, how many more of those are out there? And how many more in the surrounding land that's not yours? might also hold these similar piles of these dead ancient animals. We have no way of knowing. That's crazy. We, we, listen, I've spent 15 years on this one piece. 15 years on five acres. Yeah. And my wife, by the way, my wife calls it my adorable little hobby. <laughs> <laughs> so when she sees this, if she ever discovers how much money we spend on fuel and equipment, you know, I'm in trouble. Yeah, but historically, I mean, it's so significant. I mean, it's it's such an unusual place. Like the when I first found your page, I thought some I'm, I'm, something's wrong here. I'm reading something wrong. I can't all be coming from this one place. Like this guy, maybe this guy collects it, brings it in from other places. Maybe he's a paleontologist. And then I'm I'm like, no, this guy's just fucking finding this shit on his land. And the way you were going about it, it's like I just put it over there. I was like, this is bananas. Like, these are huge scientific discoveries. Yep. I'm not a scientist. Well, I guarantee you a lot of them. Well, m many must already know about you, right? No. No? No. They might after this. How do they not know? If you're a paleontologist and you're studying short-faced bears, or if you're studying, you know, these uh, ancient deceased mammoths and all these, wouldn't you be, wouldn't you be drawn to your place? You would think. Now, the fellow that made that documentary film, uh, he's really, he did a beautiful job on that documentary. He's won several uh, film contests. The most recent was the Denali Film co Contest last summer. It's no, It hasn't gotten really seen by anybody, but we went up to the Explorers Club in New York City for a screening of it uh, several years ago when it was done. And those people were really interested in it. And uh, I'm in the Explorers Club. Drew's in the Explorers Club. We do some pretty neat shit. But I don't know any 
we don't we're not looking for anybody to come out there. We're kind of like I'll only tell Joe Rogan about this. He lasted three fucking years, and now look what happened. <laughs> but you're, I mean, I don't want to say you're obligated, but it's like I think what you're sitting on is of immense historical significance. Not only that, but it's going to be very expensive for those guys, whoever does this kind of work, to do the proper research. Mm. Because it's a moving body of frozen ice and muck with trees that can topple down the size of your uh, chunks of ice, the size of a pickup truck can fall out of no place. So that's why we don't want a bunch of people out there wandering around. Right. And you've developed a method to do it. Yeah, we have. But and you're just kind of doing it for yourself. We're just doing it. It's like going Easter egg hunting every that's day. That's unheard of. Yeah. Isn't that unheard of? It's kind of crazy. It's very crazy, John. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Drop out of the University of Florida with a full scholarship and hitchhike into Alaska is crazy. All of it's crazy. Yeah. The whole story is crazy, but it's just crazy that you've got this five acre patch of land that's yielded dire wolves, short faced bears. Yeah. I mean, look at this. this is crazy. Yeah, that's true coming out of it coming out of a washout. You can see a tusk on the ground too on Jesus. the left. Jesus. So he just goes in this washout and pulls out these tusks. Yeah. How many more do you think are in there? We have no clue. That is so insane. This was the day after the day. You know, the day before we had pulled out a, tus uh, a mammoth and a half. And that's another tusk over there? Yeah. He's grabbing? He's grabbing right there. <sighs> so they're just everywhere in there. Yeah. Like so that. there had to be just thousands of animals that died and died in a way where they froze and sunk into the muck. I think they were transported there by water. Oh. I don't, I don't think they died right there. We, we found some mummies. Oh, like they died in a flood. They could have, wherever they died, and that just happened to end up there. But so many of them? Just guessing, right? I have no idea. You remember I told you I was a shitty student. <laughs> He seems to be a good bone digger. Oh, excuse me, boner. Bon a super boner. If you find 50,000, you're a super boner. Oh, you have, like, tears? Yeah, you and there will like... never be another super boner but me. Oh, nice. And I win the, I win the chili cook-off every year. You throw a little mammoth meat in that chili. Have you ever mm. eaten mammoth meat? Oh, yeah. What? Yep. You ate it? Yeah. What? How old was it? We didn't carbon date it, but it's... Got to be at least 12,000 years old. 